Hey, Composite Gloves here, and today I'm going to be showing you a very, very popular chord progression. It is the one, five, six, three. So the one, five, six, three, what is that deal all about? Well, it's just like the other ones. And so, you know, I, I chose to move in the key of C major because that's just the easiest right now. Um, and it's diatonic again. So the six and the three are minor. This is like another super duper popular progression. It's very kind of cool because it ends on the three chord. A weird place to end. So when you reach the three chord... You know, you just not that that's a weird cadence there. That's what that is. Um, so what do you do about that? Well, you the answer is you keep going and you push a different chord progression in there, one that sounds more final when you want to end it. So it's very useful for creating dynamic interest, creating a sense of resolve, but saying we're still going somewhere. So, okay. If anyone knows like the name of that kind of a cadence, I'm sure I'll read about it some at some point. But I don't know of a cadence that goes three, one. I'm sure there's a name for it, though. There's like a name for everything. So, okay, let's talk about this. So what I went, because we're doing, you know, MIDI piano roll type stuff, I did a little bit of sound design. I have a little bell sound I made to go on top as a melody over there. And then this is, you know, it's saying, I'm not going to explain this. Go watch my Harmer from the Ground Up if you're curious. Sound Synth Basics covers a lot of these concepts if you have any questions about this. And I'm using an arpeggiator. So the arpeggiator is going up. It's doing the two, a range of two. So it clones these notes and puts them up there and then arpeggiates them. This is what an arpeggiator sounds like. So I'm playing just a chord and it clones it for me. And you see it puts it up there. And the length of the notes it creates is determined by the gate and the time it controls the speed. And there's this cool repeat option. MIDI, uh, MIDI effects in FL, if you're curious about how that works. Okay, so uh, here's what I got using this chord progression. I'm now automating a bunch of stuff again. I'm not going to explain the sound design on this. So here we go. And see, I just end it. And see, it just keeps repeating. So you see how it wants to keep going somewhere? So that's like, I ended it there on purpose just so that you saw that like, whoa, that's like a kind of unsatisfying. So and then I wrote out a little melody doodle dab thing. It's whatever. So uh, let's talk about some interesting things we could do with this chord progression because we're focusing, you know, on the theory. So the chords. So the one, five, six, three. And now I, you could, of course, change the inversions. I did here. I did some very close voicing. What's kind of cool, though, is when you add sevenths and ninths and all sorts of madness. So we'll add a seven. Watch this. So here's what it sounds like by itself right now. Check this out. Just add the seventh. Add just the B. That, now I just sort of clicked randomly. So a G, a G would be... Uh, um, we could add... Ooh, that'd be kind of an interesting deal. Add the six. We should add the, let's add the seven, which would be an F. It would be awkward up that high. We'll add it down there. Ooh, yeah, that'll be interesting deal there. No, that's not a good idea. We'll do the six. The six sounded cooler and it fits. Oh, hmm. I don't know. So anyways, you can mess around alterations come up with something cool. You can change the order of the chords. So we could go like one and instead we could end with the five. Now this is an entirely different chord progression if you do that, but it sounds a lot more final. So if we end with five, that way we create the authentic cadence over. Or you could end with the four. Let's end with the four. So we go one, five, three, four. Or no, we have the six. I keep thinking it is a uh, I keep thinking that's a four. I just have that problem. We're going to go one, five, three, six, which is really similar to a one chord. So it'd be kind of interesting from the six to one because I mean they share two notes because there's the C major would be if we're moving the key of C, C, E, G, and then A, E, C for E minor. So the C and E share. So it's kind of very similar chord. So uh, let's try that. So we'll go. <laughs> Well, let's not do... I'm not going to omit stuff this time. So, one more time. So, 
See, now that really, now let me show you what I just did right there. Cause like hearing it is like, oh, that's kind of cool. But let's, uh, let's write out pattern. Okay. So I chose a particular inversion cause it lended itself to it and I just saw it. And so I was like, oh, uh, that's a thing. So, okay. We'll start out with our one, which will be C. So, and then there's a filter. That's the reason why the notes sound different as they get higher. And it's being, uh, is it being key tracked? I believe it is. It's being not key tracked. Oh. That's what it would sound like if it was key tracked. Okay, so I, I was messing with a band pass filter earlier. That's why I had to check. I, I forgot that I changed it to a low pass. I didn't change it to a low pass. What am I talking about? This one's a band pass. This is the one I'm thinking of. This one is key tracked. See, I'm not crazy. I was just checking because I'm like, well, this, makes sense. this doesn't make that much sense. Okay, so we have C, E, G, and then we're going to go to the five because we did the five so we'll go down because that's a nice inversion very close and then instead we're going to do the three and so this lends itself so we just keep the g oh man see the g just doesn't want to move it just g just keep it right there and then for the last thing the g can't stay there because now we're going to a minor so we'll go a which would be c and then guess what? If we move this one note down, we get the fifth and we have all three notes to form the one chord to keep going. So now it like pushes itself in a really natural, just nice sort of way. So. And now I'll toss that in with borrowed chords, which I believe I talked about a bit at some point in this series but i haven't really made it a thing but like say now we're in a minor so we could like instead of playing well, the, well let's play the g so we'll go we'll treat this c though um we'll go c we'll go c and then we'll go e flat let's do e flat well let's change the e we'll change the three for the e flat let's do that so we'll do a borrowed chord there and then we'll leave the others alone. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll go one and then we'll go one. We'll write out a B, a D, G, and a D. Oh, we could keep this G solid. Mirror that one. And then we'll go six. Now we'll go six again, though. So we'll go up. So, but we've changed inversions. And then we'll end with the three. So now we're doing this this cadence or I mean this chord progression over here we did a different chord progression because we did one five one five uh six no e g b yeah one five three six that's right one five three six and so now we're doing the one five six and then three we're going to substitute for the relative minor so we're going to go and then we're going to go into c minor and see that this will be interesting quite now this is a pretty cool sounding sort of chord progression we haven't even added alterations and stuff we just did in triads yeah that's wrong let me just say no that's right Maybe we want to substitute it up. That would be a create sort of a, play, a relative minor plagal cadence. That'd be kind of an interesting deal. Let's do F. I realized I put the wrong note down. So I was like, oh, but I knew it would sound kind of funny if I did that. Let's do this. That's a little that's a little clunky. Maybe not the best idea of doing it right before we resolve. We might consider doing it here. So we'll make this E flat. And this jump down sounds unnatural. We'll move the G up. We'll move this D sharp up. And so now we'll go to the G sharp. We'll change this to a A sharp and this will be a a G. And then we'll move this F up and then we'll move the C up. We'll make this a We'll keep it an F, what the heck? We'll keep it a four chord. 
So we have G, C, E. Um, that should be fine. Now this will be a, a very, this won't sound as done because it's also in the second inversion. So that's going to sound like kind of not done. But we start, we start in that inversion. So it sounds actually pretty okay because we have some repetition going on here. We could even, we could make it sound very done by pulling that move. Yeah, so, yep, that's thing. That's what you can do with chord progressions. They just sort of dabbled there for a little bit. If you have any questions about this chord progression, let me know. Any cool ideas? Um, a little clunky on some of the things I was thinking about right there because I was like thinking of, I almost put a C in an E flat chord. Like, oh my gosh. So, okay, which isn't a bad thing, but that's definitely not the fifth. It's, I was like, wait a second. Okay. Yeah, subscribe and have a blessed day. Yeah.